Hello friends, this is a router plane, a tool that lets you reference a surface and then this blade which protrudes below the sole of the plane can true up a surface that is lower but make it parallel. Sounds kinda niche but it's extremely useful in a lot of situations and I have this one, uh, it's an oldish one but I'm not a big fan of it. It's not comfortable to hold and the blade locking mechanism does not really work. The blade just works itself loose all the time except when you want it to be loose to adjust it then it just refuses to let go <laughs> and uh, I only have a quarter inch blade for it. It's very hard to find replacement blades and I would really like a router with at least a half inch blade. So I'm going to make my own. Here are some sketches I've made. Probably not super easy to read, but the idea is this plate is a rather thin piece of wood and then we have this block which holds the blade and a pair of knobs and the blade is held in with a wedge. I have not seen exactly this type of router plane before, but I think it should work. Let's give it a go. This piece of plywood will become the base. I'm not sure what wood it is, but it's pretty hard. Uh, seven plies, about uh, nine millimeters, three eighths thick. Yeah, I think it's gonna work pretty well. This block of beach will be the main body of the plane, so to speak. This uh, section that holds the blade. There's an example of something a router plane would have been great for. But I think I got it fairly flat. The blade is a pretty snug fit. I made it tighter up here just to give the blade more sideways support so it can't wiggle. And uh, well, it will never need to slide further back up than this. It's out of depth anyway. Right, so here is my block that will create the 10 degrees clearance for the wedge. I have a couple of screws here. They are just for keeping it in alignment when it's gluing up. Then of course when it's dry I will cut out that center section to make room for the wedge. So now I'm just going to make sure it's sitting straight, then transfer the screw locations, make a couple of small pilot holes, and then I can glue this together. Thank you. 
If I were to sharpen the blade now, this would probably be a functioning router plane. It would work great for cleaning up grooves, for example, where you have support on both sides. But I really want to be able to use it to clean up tenons as well. And then you'll often be cutting like way out here and you only have a very small amount of support here. So that's what this piece is for. That'll be the base and I also want a couple of knobs here so that you can really hold it down while you're pivoting the whole plane like this. So the next step will be to figure out exactly where I want to place the body of the plane and where the opening will go. So this feels really strong. There will be a lot of thread engagement when it's screwed all the way in. And this is beech, so it's it's a very strong wood. But even so, it is a screw going into end grain, so I'm a little bit worried the threads in here might shear off with a lot of force, but still it could happen. So I'm going to mix up some five minute epoxy and put that on the screw as I thread it in. It will of course lock the screw in place but it's really more so the epoxy will soak into the wood and reinforce the wooden threads. Yeah, that's, that's extremely solid. Those are never coming off again. <laughs>
let's try it out. Well, that seems to do exactly what I wanted to do. I think this will be a very useful addition to my joinery tools. One last thing I want to mention is this blade is kind of short. It's a bit hard to get in there with a hammer to adjust the depth, especially when it's further out. And uh, it is quite limited in how far it can travel. What's that? About a couple of centimeters, two and a half before it bottoms out and uh, of course as I sharpen the blade it will get shorter and shorter and the depth of cut will decrease so I will probably replace this blade sometime in the future that's one of the reasons I went with half inch because that's so common it should be very easy to find a longer chisel that I can use instead of this one and that's also why I didn't glue this plate in place it's just screws Granted, six might be a bit overkill, <laughs> but uh, I can remove this plate and, if needed, adjust the bed to accommodate a different chisel in the future. But this should uh, serve me well for, well, a few years, probably. The knobs are really lovely. Maybe a bit of a shame to, to use vintage plane knobs but those planes are in really bad condition i wasn't planning to restore them i really only kept them for spare parts so i think it's an acceptable use i was considering putting a strip of wood on the front here to stabilize it so it won't flex um, doesn't seem to be necessary. I can always do it later if I realize that's a problem, but it doesn't seem like I can flex this. It would take more force than you would reasonably put on something like this. And, uh, yeah, I obviously need to work on my technique. This is not a perfect tenon, but it's a whole lot better than I could do just with a saw and chisels. So yeah, with a bit of work, I think this should increase the accuracy of my joinery. Thanks for watching!